The story behind Cheese Whiz. There are almost 1,000 specialty and artisan cheesemakers in the United States. To clarify, this video is not about any of them. This video is about a product called Cheese Whiz, which despite its name, contains little to no real cheese. You'll find this famous fake cheese dip in a glass jar with a twist off lid in almost every grocery store chain across the US, typically in the chip aisle next to the salsas and French onion dips. But what actually is this culinary phenomenon, and why was it invented? Today's video will answer all of your burning questions about Cheese Whiz. Make sure to stay until the end to learn about the oddest cleaning hack ever using cheese. Whiz. All right, let's go. What is Cheese Whiz? In case you don't know what Cheese Whiz is, I'll explain it here. You really should go to the nearest grocery store and buy a jar ASAP. Cheese Whiz is an imitation cheese, somewhere between the consistency of a sauce and a dip. Despite its name, there is little to no actual cheese in the product. The original formula from the 1950s had some natural cheese, but the formula has been tweaked several times, and it's now almost completely cheese-free. If you're foolish enough to be on a diet, then Cheese Whiz may not be for you. There are 80 calories in each 2 tablespoon serving size, and this is more than the same serving size of full-fat sour cream. There are also 450 milligrams of sodium. Ugh. But who cares about these minor details? According to the Kraft website, some of the current ingredients in a jar of Cheese Whiz are whey, milk, canola oil, milk protein concentrate, salt, lactic acid, mustard flour, Worcestershire sauce, added colors, cheese culture, enzymes, and natural flavor. Now, we're not exactly sure how many cheese cultures are added or what exactly those are, and who knows what the natural flavors are. Essentially, you're looking at a product made from oil, whey, sodium, and tons of ingredients to give it an orangey-yellow color as well as shelf-stable. It's also important to note that it's not easy cheese, which is the cheese spray that comes out of an aerosol can. Cheese Whiz is found in a glass jar and typically spooned out as a topping or a dip, or in many cases, eaten straight from the jar by dipping chips directly in. History of Cheese Whiz To begin the story of Cheese Whiz, we must first travel back over 100 years to the small town of Stockton, Illinois, outside of Chicago. In this town in 1915, a man named James L. Kraft opened a cheese factory and received the first patent in the U.S. for processed cheese. Yes, this man is responsible for the Kraft Singles and began the multi-billion dollar conglomerate known today as the Kraft Heinz Company. Now, fast forward to the 1950s when the world of processed cheese evolved yet again. Cheese Whiz is an absurdly American product. However, it was originally created with British consumers in mind. There's a popular British dish called the Welsh Rarebit. The Welsh Rarebit, also known as Welsh Rabbit, is a traditional dish from Wales that's made by topping a slice of toasted bread with a savory cheese sauce. Side note, there's no actual rabbit in this dish. Hmm, are we beginning to notice a trend here of food items being named after ingredients they don't contain? The cheese sauce in the Welsh rabbit is very difficult to make properly because it can easily burn or have the wrong consistency. The sauce is typically made by melting cheese and combining it with butter, mustard, and other ingredients and then it's poured over the toasted bread. The dish is usually served hot, and it's often accompanied by vegetables or other side dishes. There are many variations of Welsh rabbit, and the dish has been popular in Wales for centuries. It's often served as a snack or as a light meal, and it's particularly popular as a late night snack. Some people also enjoy Welsh rabbit as a topping for burgers or other sandwiches. So in the 1950s, the craft company saw an opportunity. What if it was possible to create a shelf-stable cheese sauce that could be put on the Welsh rabbit, rather than making the sauce from scratch? Home chefs all across the UK would celebrate this time-saving hack. So in 1952, a food scientist at Kraft named Edwin Traisman invented Cheese Whiz, and it quickly became a success. Only one short year later, the cheese in a jar came to America. What do people use Cheese Whiz for? There are many ways to enjoy the ooey-gooey neon orange substance known as Cheese Whiz, the most popular of which is on a Philly cheesesteak. 
Originally, cheese steaks did not have cheese at all and were just called Philly steaks. But provolone cheese was introduced in the 1940s, and it became a popular addition. The steak sandwich was then renamed to Philly cheese steak. In the 1950s, restaurants in Philadelphia began putting cheese whiz on top of their cheese steaks rather than provolone, and thus, a legend was born. Other people associate cheese whiz with Super Bowl parties, Royal Rumble parties, or just about any kind of party where you may find things like Doritos and Bud Light. It's commonly used on nachos, as chip dip, or drizzled over french fries. Sometimes it's warmed up and served as a creamy dip, and it can be souped up with bacon bits or chives. Another popular use is to smear it over a hamburger or drizzle it on your hot dog. Or for a healthier option, you can always pour it over your broccoli. No matter how you eat your cheese whiz, you'll be sure to enjoy its creamy, seasoned, cheddary taste. In pop culture, in the classic 1980 film Blues Brothers, Dan Aykroyd's character is asked by an old man, Did you get my cheese whiz, boy? Did you get me my cheese whiz, boy? An Aykroyd pulls an aerosol can out of his pocket and throws it to him. What an oversight! We all know now that cheese whiz comes in a jar, not in an aerosol can. In fact, you can even see a Nabisco brand label on the aerosol can used in the movie, not Kraft. In a really cool publicity stunt, the popular fast food chain Wayback Burgers got us all with a great April Fool's joke back in 2016. They announced in a fake press release that they would be releasing a new cheesy gold milkshake made from milk and cheese whiz. People across the world were revolted. Well, the joke was on them because soon after the press release, the company revealed that <gasps> it was only an April Fool's joke. However, some Wayback locations took the joke a little too far, offering free Cheese Whiz milkshakes to anyone brave enough to try one. Oh, that's gross. In 2010, then-President Barack Obama visited the city of Philadelphia on a Democratic campaign fundraiser. While there, he went to Carmen's famous Italian hoagies and cheesesteaks and ordered a Philly cheesesteak with Whiz. Whew, think of the shame if he had ordered it without Cheese Whiz. Now, not all popular cultural references are good, especially when it comes to Cheese Whiz. In 2001, a man named Dean Southworth was quoted saying that Cheese Whiz tastes like axle grease. Yeah, my first question here is, what on earth does axle grease taste like? Had this individual actually tried axle grease before in order to properly compare it to Cheese Whiz? What was notable about the quote is that Dean was on the original team of scientists who invented Cheese Whiz. He was disappointed because when he popped open the jar and tasted some, he thought it didn't taste anything like the original Cheese Whiz from the 50s. Well, Dean was right. The recipe has changed so many times, it really is a new product now. So sorry, Dean. Cheese Whiz Variations Many variations of Cheese Whiz have popped up over the years. Cheese Whiz Light was invented in Canada as a way to skirt the dietary concerns many people have about the dip. However, when carefully comparing the Cheese Whiz and Cheese Whiz Light labels, you'll notice that the main difference is the serving size. Cheese Whiz Light serving size is one tablespoon, and regular Cheese Whiz serving size is two tablespoons. It's also worth noting that in the light version, the sodium is actually high than the regular formula. Another extremely popular variation is the Cheese Whiz Salsa Con Queso. This version features spicy ingredients like jalapeno peppers, chili peppers, and paprika. It can be hard to find, so if you ever see it at the grocery store, make sure to buy two or ten jars. A third variation is called Cheese Whiz Burger Flavor, and we can only guess what this tastes like. Many of us will never find out because this kind of cheese whiz is only sold in the Philippines. Now, all of these have been food variations, but there's an extremely odd hack with cheese whiz, and it has nothing to do with eating it. Ready? You can actually use cheese whiz to get stains out of your clothes. Wait, what? Yeah, apparently you can use cheese whiz as a stain remover because it has trisodium phosphate in it. Trisodium phosphate is a popular cleaning product, but don't worry. It's also approved by the FDA as a food additive. So if you're not interested in eating Cheese Whiz on your food, you try using it as a cleaning product. Just apply, let sit for about 10 minutes, then throw it in the washing machine. All right, some of you may like Cheese Whiz and some of you may hate it. Either way, it's been a popular product around the world for over 70 years and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And that's a wrap on today's video. I'm curious, would you rather eat Cheese Whiz on a Philly cheesesteak or on nachos? Tell us in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to our channel for more super interesting food videos.